Hey guys, it's Ann here on the Paint Couture page. We're coming to you from Pearson Bell at Home in Old Town Spring, which is in Spring, Texas. When you guys hop on, let me know where you're from, either on the replay or in the live. Let me know where you're watching from. And also today, I want to know what your absolute favorite paint couture paint color is. So when you hop on, tell me where you're from, where you're watching from, and tell me what your current, I'll say current, paint couture favorite color is. Mine, you guys can probably guess, is Vera at the Ballet, and a little bit of Polynesian pink. So that's probably not a surprise to all of you. All right, so today we're gonna work on a project I, um, I think all of you can relate. So I, this is a silver plated piece and I won it in an auction. It was actually a really nice piece, very pretty. The only problem is that it had Murphy written on the middle with 20 years service. Well, I'm not Murphy. I don't know anybody named Murphy. So I was like, well, that's just a waste. And so it sat around um, waiting for a project to happen. Um, a lot of times too with your silver pieces, you know, they start to tarnish and well, that's not any fun to continue to tar uh, polish them, especially if you don't use them. So this piece, obviously it had somebody else's name on it and not sentimental at all. And we do have quite a few silver pieces here in the shop. So they may eventually all get painted at some point. So your first step, of course, is always clean, always rinse your cleaner off, and you will need a bonding primer. So grab a bonding primer, uh, follow the directions, and apply it to your piece. I'm only doing the front side. I want to keep the back side silver um, just because I want to. Um, and you're not going to actually see the back of this one when we're done anyway. All right. So I'm going to go outside of my box on color and I'm going to go with Misty Fjord and that looks like Misty Fjord, it's not that, it's Misty Fjord, that's how you pronounce it. And we're going to just apply it here on our piece, it's kind of a vintage greenish color. I was shooting for a vintagey minty color, so there's the color there for you guys and I always have my stubby handle brush by Zebra one of my favorites so we're just gonna put a layer of paint on this and if you have detail you might um, could do some dry brushing or glazing to accent the, the uh, detail in your piece we're gonna do a little bit of dry brushing on the edge of this one but instead of just having those pieces sit around the house why not paint them into something pretty that you'll use and hang in your house or use in a different way so we'll probably end up selling this piece not sure if I really love it it may end up going in my house because I actually really liked this silver piece but I wasn't Murphy, so. And the only thing about buying something on an auction is they actually didn't show that, which was a real bummer. Because I think I paid a pretty good amount for it. So I was a little bummed out when I got there and got it. I was like, really? So that's okay. We're going to salvage it, make something different out of it. Okay, and I'm just getting all of this. This color again is Misty Fjord. And our link is in the comments or in our title, I guess you want to say. And you can also find the link for your nearest paint couture retailer. All right, I'm painting this middle part because I'm going to be doing a little bit something else on here and I want it nice and dry. All right, let's get those edges. All right, I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush to get all of 
this detail because it's a lot of detail on this edge here and I do like to use my little Lazy Susans. You can buy them at your Walmart, your Target, your wherever you get your stuff. TJ Maxx has them wherever. They are just a lifesaver when you're doing small projects like this. So, because it just kind of makes it easy to turn it around, turn it as you need. Okay, we're just trying to get this nice and covered. Now, I don't know if you guys really paid attention or really noticed um, on the primer coat, it looked kind of messy. Well, typically your primers are not gonna be heavily pigmented, so it's not gonna be the same coverage you'd get in paint. So never worry about that. I know I have a few customers concerned that if they're using any kind of primer for whatever reason, um, in this case, bonding primer, that it didn't cover, and that's not the purpose of the primer. The purpose is for it to bond to the surface in this case so it's just the nature of how those are made and you can get those we have them and you can get them at your hardware store so any bonding primer will do all right so hopefully you guys will get inspired um, don't hit up Grandma's China though, because she might get a little upset with you. But uh, do go through and see what you've got. Maybe you'll find a piece of China that, or um, silver plate that you just really didn't like anymore, or just didn't work, or was always tarnished. Or maybe you guys, we have some tarnished pieces that um, were probably over cleaned, and the silver plate is coming off in some areas. So those would make perfect pieces to paint. All right, so we're getting to the end of this little section. I'll make sure I get all my edges. And if you guys have questions, you can certainly drop them down in the comments. I'll definitely be back to read through them. I do read all of the comments. I answer all of them. And I appreciate you all watching. All right. I'm here every Thursday. And you know, guys, Justin has a new time on Saturday. So we'll see what he's got up his sleeve on Saturday. And if you have suggestions of what you want to see me paint, just drop those or message me, whatever. Because I would love to do things that you guys want to see. Or if you have a question about something, how does it work? I will always be more than happy to demonstrate. Okay, I'm going to get some of this edging. The mist here and so this is a one-of-a-kind piece so I don't have another one so we're gonna use the hair dryer on the cool setting the cool setting with the acrylic paint works the best it dries it without um, if you use the hot setting it kind of makes a plasticky coat so it dries that top layer before it dries that bottom layer and it doesn't look so good and I really want this to be good and dry. Okay. I'm gonna hit it real quick with the hair dryer because I feel like I need a, I'll probably need a second coat with this color. Let's see. I'm just gonna get that, kind of roll it. We're just going to dry it to speed up the process here. If you were at home, you'd let it dry naturally. Okay. 
Remember when you guys hop on, tell me what your favorite paint couture color is. I'd love to know. And you guys always can sprinkle the video out to your friends and your family. We appreciate that. Make sure you give us some thumbs up. And if you're catching us on the replay, make sure you hashtag replay so we know you've seen it. seconds here. I'm going to see where I need to hit some more paint. Alright, so it's not totally, totally dry, but there's some spots that I can go ahead and get here. Just going to make sure we get nice coverage. of this all right and we do sell these sample size they are great for small projects a little bit does go a long way You can do your teapot, service set, your trays, whatever your heart desires. You can get as intricate as you want or as simple. All right. Get this edging. I want to make sure I've got my edges. Sometimes on these very intricate spots, you have to kind of like jab it in and then just smooth it out. Just making sure you get all the paint in those crevices. Oh, there's some missed spots there. I, guys, I can't believe it's already October 1st. It's so hard to believe. I feel like we just went through um, August. <laughs> like, I feel like it just August started. So, to be already October 1st is crazy to me right now. It's been a crazy year. So, we're just zooming through, I feel like. I hope you guys are experiencing the same thing. So I know March was probably the longest month we all had. So now to have everything speeding by is kind of crazy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump that in my water. I'm gonna close this up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and dry this again. And again, we're using the cool setting so that it dries it almost from the inside, I guess, out. Heat makes it a little unpleasant looking. The heat, I think, does something on the top. So we found that the, uh, Dustin actually found that the cool setting was the best. So cool hair dryer is the way to go. And I like to use my little turntable here and just kind of keep it turning.
trying to get this pretty dry because we're doing a little, little bit of uh, more paint on this. If you guys have ever painted and you put on another coat of paint while it's still tacky or still kind of wet, you pulled up your other paint. So we definitely don't want that to happen. Just going to make sure we have this nice and dry. Okay, all right, so that's gonna be dry enough for this, what we're doing in the next treatment. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna kinda highlight this very ornate detail on the edges that we've got. So I wanna kinda make that pop. So I've got our Italian ivory, and we're just gonna dry brush that. All right. Hey guys, I hope y'all are all doing great. I don't, by the way, I don't see the comments while I'm filming. For whatever reason, Facebook has done something weird and I can never see the comments. So I do see sometimes when people hop on, but I don't see any comments. So make sure if you have any questions, I definitely will answer them after the live. So I'm not ignoring you, I promise. Okay, got a little extra, got a little crazy out the paint there. All right, so we're gonna get a pretty good amount on our brush and I'm going to wipe most of it off now onto my paper towel. That really is just kind of working that in. And then of course I'm gonna test it out on my little paper. That's why I have them. All right, so what we're gonna do is just go ahead and very lightly if you guys can see that let's see uh, can you guys see that I hope you do okay that little bit of contrast there we'll keep going all the way around just highlighting the details of the silver piece This is actually a really gorgeous piece. Okay, and I'm going to go the other direction so it hits some of the highlight going the other direction. So maybe if Grandma is giving you her silver set, don't pass it up. Paint it. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. You can always find silver sets or silver pieces at the thrift stores. And I would look for the pieces that have um, maybe the silver plate has come off or is worn off so it's not as desirable for some people and you can probably get a better deal for it than that perfect silver set. There's some little flowers here that I'm hitting and trying to make sure I highlight. And we haven't reloaded our brush. We won't need to at all. So we are just gonna use everything we've got on our brush to do the highlighting. And you could also do a glaze. If we were doing a glaze, we'd need the paint to dry 
couple hours for me I like to let it dry overnight we're really humid here so the more it dries the better for me um, so since I didn't have that kind of time I opted to do dry brushing instead and you can also distress it back so if you wanted to see some of the silver you could certainly distress the paint back to see the silver remember it's going to tarnish so just keep that in mind all right okay I like where we're going on that so again very little paint for dry brushing is all you need so I'm gonna lift that a little bit so you guys can see it okay I hope you can see how pretty that is all right so what I'm gonna do next is we're going to do a transfer, but I also want to do a stencil, but I need to know where my transfer is going to sit a bit and it's oversized for the piece. So I'm going to cut out some parts that I'm not going to use. This is a piece that we've had for a while. We've used other parts of it for some lazy Susans, some other things, you name it, we've used it. So this is what was left over. So I'm just going to cut away the parts I don't want. And I've already, just so you know, I've already kind of pre-measured where it's going to fit. So I know where I'm cutting. And you know what? I can always use those parts somewhere else in this design if I chose to. Just going to cut around. We've got this little flowers we're cutting off. I'm cutting this kind of brown flower out. We also use this particular one on the little pink chest we painted a few weeks ago. So we get a lot of bang for our buck on a lot of our transfers. I like to pick out transfers that have a lot of different elements that you can use for various projects. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy out. We might use the honeybee somewhere. I love the bee. I love bees, terrified of them, but I love them. We need them for our economy, our ecosystem. So I just, but I love bees, love honey. Like I said, I am pretty terrified of bees. In the spring, we occasionally get them coming into the shop because they're looking to um, pollinate either my candles or the soaps so usually I can find them hanging out in the soap area and then we do have a lot of faux florals so I sometimes find the bees just kind of like hanging out with the florals so and I guess they're kind of confused like why does this not have any pollen so it's just weird there's my random bee rant bee bee talk all right Get this little guy. We're cutting this little pink flower off. I know, super sad. But we can probably use her somewhere else. Just not in the cards for this one. Okay. All right, so we got all those little pieces. We'll just stick those over there. All right, so you can just kind of decide where you want it. I think we're gonna go about there. It's one of those things you kind of have to just play with it and move it around. So I kind of need now we're gonna go there all right so I want some writing about there so we're gonna do about three lines of writing hopefully I'll remember how I wanted that all right so we're going to stencil we're using Baltic black to stencil with Okay. 
All right. And I use little makeup sponges. It's the easiest thing for me to do. So I'm going to load up my, my sponge. Now it's too much right there. So we're going to definitely um, get some of that off. And I like to pat it off here. All right. So I'm probably going to stand up on this one. All right. And we are going to take that Lazy Susan off. All right, so let's see. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the stencil. Let's see if I want him there, okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it just, it can be kind of worn looking and if it is tragic once we're done, we can just simply sand it back a little to give it an aged look and move on from there. So it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. It's kind of hard getting a, this is kind of a fairly stiff stencil into the curviness of this piece. And you can always cut stencils if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette. There's even a transfer with words. I just didn't have any that didn't actually had some of the words didn't make sense for this application. So I wanted to make sure that at least it was kind of cool. Woo. All right. This is all French writing. I need like another set of hands. And you can always find a stencil that's easier. I like to do things the hard way sometimes. get some more of this on here and some of this will get covered up by the flowers as well and you know we have that bee so if we have a, a tragic area we can always throw our bee on our plate here so not a big deal at all again it's just paint and you can always paint right over it. Okay. Get into this end part. just moved. Okay, that may not line up. And that is a-okay. All right. Oh yeah, I got a little messy there, but that's okay. A-okay. Probably a little bit too much paint on there, but that's all right. I'm just going to wipe this off. Actually, I'll go back and soak that in alcohol later. It'll actually come off faster and easier. Okay. All right, because that's a more delicate stencil. All right, let's go ahead and dry this up a bit. Let's go ahead and toss that down here. We're going to dry this.
Okay. So a little bit messy, but I'm okay with it. Maybe their ink blotter got crazy. Never know. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right. So we can always do a wash over it because you know it'll look vintage when we're done. Okay. So let's go back to our flower part that we cut out. All right. So we're going to go ahead and place it. Like I said, some of it, the words will get covered up. So not a big deal. All right. So we're going to go there. So we're going to just peel our backing off. And this was Fuchsia Sunset. Um, I have long sold out of this guy. I think it's still available out there. But for me, it's already run its course. So we are good with it. Okay, once you're good with your placement of your flowers, you can go ahead and just press it down. All right. Okay. Alrighty. Y'all, this cord's going to kill me here. All right, so now what we're going to do is take our transfer tool, which y'all, if you've watched me before, I originally poo-pooed the transfer tool. I was like, you don't need a transfer tool. The stick that comes with it's just fine. Okay, seriously, try doing a really big transfer with this thing. It's crazy. So this is much easier for me to do. Now, keep in mind, I like to at least give my paint some time to really dry. So hopefully we don't have any sticking issues right now while I'm trying to get it on there. Just sticks better to dry, dry paint. So this is one of those projects. I couldn't have another one pre-prepped because I had just one. That's what makes it kind of special. We just have one. And I don't use the Lazy Susan on this part because it makes it too hard to um, put as much pressure on it as I like. Okay. Just gonna keep rubbing that whole thing. All right, let's see here. All right, uh, let's see what we've got. Got a little stubborn spot. Okay. And just, I always usually, and this is kind of hard for you guys to see, I usually try to peel and put pressure down at the same time. Get away. All right. And see, I've got a little part that wants to pull up right here. Just put it back down and keep burnishing it. Okay, there we go. And you can pretty much put a transfer on any solid surface. And I have been told you can do it on fabric. I have not done that yet. Little leaf wants to come up usually around those areas where you have your little halo. And that's okay. Just put it back down and put pressure on it. All right. Got it. And let's see. I need... 
Let's see, I didn't have one. So let's see if I've got a burnish. Yeah. All right, so I've got a finishing pad. And I just take them and I cut them up into smaller sections. This is usually bigger than I normally use. So I'm going to take, and you can take a cloth, anything you want, your finger. Although uh, I've usually not had good luck doing that with my finger because I'll get some of the transfer stuck to me as it does easily stick to yourself. Um, but I usually start from the inside and work my way out. And that's just to make sure you press all the air bubbles out of your transfer. If you have air bubbles, it will cause it to uh, open up and split on you, especially when you put a top coat. And you do need to, well, although I do have a piece that I did not put a top coat on, and it is decorative only. So this is, for me, this is going to be decorative only. So I guess you don't necessarily have to put a top coat. But it still could fail if there's air bubbles in there because they just will open up on you. Okay, be careful I don't have any wet paint right there. Okay. Alright, and if you ever mess up a transfer, it's not a big deal. Just sometimes you can just pretend it was supposed to be that way. Just distress it extra and be done. Don't let it um, get you down. I've seen too many uh, posts where people are like, Oh, I ruined my whole piece because this one part of the transfer got stuck. No, your whole piece is not ruined. I promise. Just keep going. Make it look distressed. All right, so we've got that ah, ta -da, on there. So we can decide if we want to add our B on it if we wanted to. I'm not sure. I think my B was kind of big. So I think I might leave him. I might leave him off. He'll find another home one day. He's going to go on a piece. And I think I'll save him for now. I think he'll go on another piece another time. Um, I'm not ready to go ahead and use the B yet. It's just one of those things. So we can add in an extra flower down here because we look a little puny in this little area if we want to. Actually, I like that little piece. This is an older transfer, so just warning, letting you know that now, this is one of the older transfers. So I have not layered any of the new transfers yet. I've heard that it can be a little bit tricky, but it just takes patience. All right. Okay, we're just gonna add a little extra right here. I think that's where I want him, yeah. I want him coming from the back of that guy right in there, like that. I'm just going to add that right there. I just want a little extra, extra. And be careful not to scratch your current transfer that's on the piece. Because that might make you sad. And just flow with the curve of the piece. Not a big deal. All right, let's see. Little parts want to stick. Not a big deal. Just put it back down and keep going. Make sure you got all your parts. And the key is just go slow. Don't rip it off then it will be really hard to kind of match it back up. All right. Okay, again, I'm going to take my little burnishing piece here, or my finishing pad, just kind of make sure it all goes down. All right. 
So now what we would do, and we're not going to do it today because I don't, one, have the right size. But what you could do with a piece, like here's your piece, you could either put it in a plate rack to display it. Um, you could put a sealer on top. Um, I may go and do a glaze. I don't know yet. Um, but you can always get these little discs. You can get these Hobby Lobby and you just add water to them, follow the directions, and you can pop them right on the back of your piece so it's flat on the back of your piece and you can literally just hang it on the wall then. So that's what we're probably going to do with this piece is just put a little hanger back here so it can hang right on the wall. And that's it. You took your silver piece, that tarnished silver piece, in case of this one had a weird name on it, not my name so and then like 20 years of service woo wasn't mine so um there you go easy peasy you can paint your silver pieces i'd love to see what you guys do so if you guys do paint them tag um tag me at pearson bell and you can also tag uh paint couture especially if you're using paint couture paint we'd love to see your creations um make sure you guys give us a thumbs up also, there is a pumpkin contest for all you guys that are uh, watching. So submit your pumpkin to Paint Couture. And again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Happy painting!